Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. This is Harshita here and today we'll be discussing about what is public key cryptography. So let's get started. Public key cryptography is a form of asymmetric encryption that makes use of two separate set of keys, a public key and a private key. So what happens is, say there are two people, a sender and a receiver. This receiver has a public key and a private key. The private key of the receiver is private to the receiver himself, whereas the public key of the receiver is exposed to the entire world. Now suppose the sender want to send a message to the receiver such that nobody else gets to know that what the message is. Only and only the receiver should be able to understand what the message is. In that case, the sender would want to encrypt his or her message and send it to the receiver, right? So how does the sender do this? So the sender first procures the recipient's public key using which he or she encrypts the message into a secure ciphertext format, okay? And then the sender sends this ciphertext to the receiver. The receiver then uses his or her private key to decrypt this message into plain text. In this case, what happens is that since the private key is private to the receiver only, so only he can understand by decrypting the message, right? Nobody else will be able to decrypt the message and would ever get to know what did the sender send to the receiver, okay? The algorithms for setting up public key cryptography systems are such that even if the public key is known to a third party, it is nearly impossible to get the private key. And hence, the public key of the recipient can be disseminated widely and yet the whole process remains secure. One more important thing to note here is that each set of public key and private key is unique and differs from receiver to receiver. Makes sense, right? If each receiver has the same set of public key and private key, any receiver will be able to decrypt the message sent to any other receiver and then the system won't be secure, right? And hence it is mandatory that every receiver has a different set of uh, public key and private key. Now we'll be talking about RSA algorithm, which is a very popular public key cryptography system that is based on integer factorization model and on the impracticality of factorizing large numbers. Factorization of very large integers is nearly impossible as of now because our technology is not so advanced yet. However, as the quantum computing is growing, the threat to the cryptographic systems based on integer factorization model is growing as well. But for now, the threat is not much and RSA is safely used. RSA has three main parts, key generation, encryption and decryption and we'll be going through each of these parts in detail in further slides. Okay, so we'll be talking about key generation of RSA in this slide. So how the key generation is done? Firstly, an RSA modulus denoted by N is generated. So what is done to do that? Two very large prime numbers are taken. These prime numbers are usually of 1024 to 4096 bits in length. And Let's call these uh, large prime numbers as P and Q, okay? Then N equals to P into Q. Now, this is the RSC modulus, N, okay? In the second step, we get the derived number denoted by E. So, this E should be chosen such that E is greater than 1, but is less than P minus 1 into Q minus 1, okay? And one more thing to be kept in mind is that E and P minus 1 into Q minus 1 should be co-prime numbers, Okay, the third step in key generation is formation of the public key. Now, public key is represented by n comma e, and this public key can be exposed to the entire world. Okay, then the last step of key generation is generation of private key. Now, private key is represented by n comma d. Okay, and d multiplied by e equals to one modulus p minus one to q minus one. Okay, which means that the D is the multiplicative inverse of E modulo P minus 1 into Q minus 1. Okay, so in this slide, we saw how is the public key and the private key generated. Now, let's go to the next step, which is encryption. Now, if the sender wants to send a message to the receiver after encryption. So, this is the method that the sender will apply. 
So firstly, the sender will convert the non-padded plain text into a padded number M using appropriate padding protocol and has to keep in mind that M is greater than zero, but less than N. Okay. And then the sender generates the cipher text, which is essentially M to the power E mod N. Okay. So this E is a part of public key. N is also part of public key. M is the message that the sender wants to send. And hence, in this way, the sender can actually generate the cipher text which he wants to send to the receiver. Okay. Now, if the message is received by the receiver, now the message is encrypted, right? And to understand what is in the message, the receiver needs to decrypt the message. Okay. So the receiver can decrypt the message as follows. So the receiver will raise the cipher text to the power D mod N. Okay. So as you can see that this leads to after solving M mod N where M is actual message. Okay. Now it becomes a bit counterintuitive because while key generation, we had seen that we had to choose D and E such that they are multiplicative inverses modulus P minus one into Q minus one. But here we are saying that E into D equals to one modulo N as well. N is essentially P into Q. So the proof also is mentioned in this slide. So in this proof, we apply Euler's theorem. Okay. And hence you can directly see that actually M to the power E comma D mod N actually boils down to M. Okay. So this is how the RSA algorithm works. RSA is a very popular public key cryptography system. There are other systems as well, but this is the most widely used as of now. Hope you like this video. If you really like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and yes, stay in tuned for more awesome videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.